Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm giving a set of mini drawers a French country makeover. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. I found this sweet set of little drawers at the thrift store for, I think it was about $7. It was a really good price. They're really solid, but they are really dated. So my first step is to remove all of this mismatched hardware. It's not my style. It's cute, but it's just not the look I'm going for. So I'm going to remove all of that and give it a good clean. I'm then going to be painting the entire thing with Dixie Belle's Sunkissed Silk Mineral Paint. This paint has a built-in stain blocker, so it's going to make sure that all the designs underneath stay hidden. And it's also got a built-in top coat, so I won't have to seal this when I'm done. I prefer to use a synthetic brush when I'm using the Silk Range. I find that I get less brush strokes doing this. So as you can see here, this piece already has a bit of texture and this was obviously done as a factory design. It just came like this. So I am keeping in mind that you will be able to see this texture underneath my paint. Silk mineral paint is self-leveling, so you're going to be able to see it, but that's okay. It definitely goes with the look that we're trying to achieve here, which is a French country sort of apothecary almost style set of drawers. I'm going to give each of my paint coats about two hours to dry. Once my paint is dry, I'm putting the drawers back in because we're now going to be using IOD's Rose 12 stamp. This is my first time using this design. I'm so excited to try it out, but first I need to give this a light sand. So I'm taking off one of the plastic sheets and I'm going to be using a 220 grit sandpaper to just lightly sand my stamp. So as you can see, I'm going in one direction and then I'm going to turn the stamp around and I'm going to sand again in the other direction. You only ever need to do this once when you first open up your stamps. I'm going to be using a few elements from this stamp and I wanna start with the top. I really like the text that comes with this stamp. So we're gonna take a little bit of that design and pop it up the top. So here I'm just working out position and then once I'm happy with it, I'm going to use a piece of clear thin mount and I have trimmed it as you can see. This is just gonna help me make sure that I'm applying it straight. I'm then going to be using some IOD black ink and I'm just inking up my letters and then I'm gonna very carefully turn it over and I'm going to position it where I want it and once I'm happy with the position, I'll press down. Once you do, you're committed. You wanna have one hand holding it in place while the other moves around to make sure that you have good contact. I'm going to repeat the same process for the other section of text. If you do not have access to ink, you could definitely use paint for this, but you're going to wanna get yourself a brayer and you're going to want to apply your paint with a brayer to your stamps. And always offload a lot of your paint before you do this because you don't want that paint to sink down into the details of your stamp and make your design muddied. I'm going to reuse the stamp that I just used. I wanna place it down the bottom. We're gonna do a bit of a scattered design here and I've just inked that up and I'm gonna place it down in the bottom right hand corner. Apologies if you can see the dog hair that's on my clothes. In these close up shots, I have three beautiful dogs and their hair gets everywhere. If you have pets and you're a crafter, you know what this is like. Now I'm inking up one of the beautiful rose designs and I'm going to be applying that onto my set of drawers. And it's a little bit tricky here because the drawers are sinking into the cavity and I have to sort of press down and manipulate the stamp to make sure that I can actually get an impression and that I don't miss out on any of the design. If you have to do this, just take it really slow and work in sections. And I've obviously taken it off the backing so that I can manipulate it. I'm going to also add this little bit of text on the bottom right hand drawer. And again, I don't really have a fixed plan for this. I was just going with what felt right and what felt balanced. 
Next, I'm going to be using another one of the floral designs in the bottom left-hand corner. And again, just inking up my stamp. I'm not going too heavy with the ink for a reason that you will be seeing very shortly. So I'm just positioning it in the bottom left-hand corner. And again, one hand is holding it in place while the other is moving around the stamp and applying pressure. So no surprises, I want this to look vintage and worn. So I am now taking a baby wipe and I am going to rub back the ink. Now it is not smearing, it is fading it beautifully. It's turning it into almost a gray tone. And this is a really great way to make your stamping look faded and worn. Now I have learned that this is not something you can do with all ink brands. I am specifically using IOD ink. So if you are not sure and you wanna try this with a different ink, do a practice with it first. It's also important to note that before you can do something like this, your paint needs to be sealed, otherwise the ink will soak into the porous paint that you're using. So silk has a built-in sealer, so I was okay here. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's Painterly Florals. I have never used this one before. I'm so excited to open this pack up and I am specifically thinking that I'm going to be using the beautiful lavender. I really want this to be something that's a bit subtle. We're just going to put it on the sides. So I've decided that I'm going to cut out three of the lavender stems here and we're going to put three on one side and three on the other. So I've picked peeled off the paper backing and now I am using the transfer tool to rub and burnish my design down and you can see I'm lifting the carrier sheet as I go you definitely want to take your time with this if you miss a spot go back put it back down and start rubbing again so I'm grabbing another three of the lavender stems here I did have to do a little bit of uh, fussy precise cutting here and I'm going to position the transfer where I want it and repeat the same steps Once I have all my transfers down and burnished well, I'm going to seal the entire thing with Dixie Belle's gloss clear coat. Ordinarily, I wouldn't have to do this. Silk has a built-in sealer, but I wanted to seal in my transfers and my stamps for the next step. I'm now going to be using Dixie Belle's Au Naturel Voodoo Gel Stain. This is a water-based product that I love to use as a glaze. I am brushing it on and then I'm coming in with a paper towel and I am wiping back a lot of the excess. You can see that I'm actually wiping it back mainly from the inside and sort of creating a halo on the outside. To remove even more product from the inside, I'm using a baby wipe and that's helping me move a little bit more product. I'm going to repeat the same process for the entire set of drawers. If you don't have access to the same product I'm using, you could make yourself a paint wash to achieve a similar result. You could use a similar glaze or you could come in with a wax to antique it. I'm really loving the vintage feel that this is giving. It's not as harsh as a dark wax, but it definitely gives it that antiqued look. I imagine this sitting on maybe a botanist desk and it's filled with seeds. And I don't know about you guys, but I do kind of think up stories for some of the projects I'm working on. It just really helps me envision the end result that I want to achieve. I know I might be crazy. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you guys do. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that I love to make things look dirty. <laughs> I am coming in now with some easy peasy spray wax. I'm spraying it onto my piece because I need something for my Dixie dirt that I'm about to use. I've just got a little brush and I am adding it to the areas where I imagine that the dirt and weathering would naturally occur. So I'm specifically going in the bottom corners and along the edges and you can see I'm adding it, but then I'm also taking it away with a paper towel. Our Easy Peasy Spray Wax is allowing that Dixie Dirt to sit and stay where I want it to. I'm using charcoal today, but it also comes in earth, which is more of a brown tone, and it also comes in ash, which is like it sounds. It's like ash from the fire. 
Now I'm specifically adding the dirt to the areas where I know that texture is sitting underneath my paint. I know that the dirt is going to grab that texture and it's going to sit in all of those details. Now that I'm finished with the front, I'm spraying some of my wax on the top. I am wiping a lot of the excess off and then I'm going to come in with the Dixie Dirt and add it to the top of our little drawers. You can see I'm specifically focusing on the edges of the piece where I imagine it would accumulate. Now I'm repeating the same steps for the sides. And again, I'm focusing on the top and a little bit on the bottom and I am wiping off a lot of the excess. Next, I'm going to focus on the hardware. I wanted to replace those drawer handles and I have these lovely library card catalog handles that I bought a while ago. I think I grabbed them off eBay actually. So first of all, I need to mark where I need the little screws to go. I'm going to pre-drill some little tiny holes and then I'm using a little screwdriver to screw in the tiny screws that come with these. I didn't have a drill bit small enough to be able to use that with these, so I did hand screw in each of them. This is probably best anyway, because it's really easy to strip tiny screws like this. Now that all my handles are attached, I need to create some little labels to go in my library card catalog handles. First, I'm measuring up the size of the paper that I'm going to need, and then I'm just going to roughly measure out on some art paper that I have, the labels that I need. I'm not too fussed on getting it perfect. I, am, I don't even have a ruler to use at this point, so I'm just trimming out the size that I think I'll need. And then I'm going to grab my brown wax brush. And I'm adding some brown Bestang wax to my labels. This is just residue. I haven't added any extra wax to this. So I'm just adding a little bit of wax to the paper to give it the appearance of age. I'm going to repeat the same process, making little labels for each of my drawers. And here are our finished mini drawers. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I think that they came from something that was quite dated to something that's quite sophisticated and would look beautiful in an office or any room really. Those IOD stamps are stunning and I love how they work with that painterly floral transfer. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and share it out to a friend that you think might like it too. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.